Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hype, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, The Hut, and welcome back to the Baseball Hut. I hope you like this video. We're going to talk about Juan Soto, as you know. That's going to be one of the big names that it's going to get traded. But you want to subscribe to this channel for a very simple reason. One, for this video, because you will find out my trade proposal in the middle of this video. And at the end of this video, I will discuss the teams that the Mets are going to have to compete against to make a trade with the San Diego Padres for them. Okay, now here we go. As you know, David Stearns was uh, named the Mets' new president of baseball operations. The very first president of baseball operations. I think they had to, they kind of done this in the past, but where it's just solely president of baseball operations. Mets owner Steve Cohen had taken a long time he waited a long time for Stearns to become a free agent. Boy, he's a patient guy. I probably would have hired like four or five other guys before Stearns became available. And then that kind of what he did with the with the general managers. But Stearns came in. He said all the right things. Uh, obviously, the first thing he, that they did before he came in is they fired the manager. I'll have a video on 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 the manager again and the managerial candidates uh, coming up this off season uh, on the baseball hut too. Uh, but here we go with, with uh, Juan Soto. And obviously Juan Soto is going to be a big name out there for a lot of teams, including the New York Mets. Now, I came up with a trade proposal. You need to keep an eye out in the middle of this video. But let's go over a couple of things about Soto. He is currently 24 years old. In about three weeks, he's going to turn 25. Uh, there was concern within the, Mets farm, within the Mets front office that they were concerned that he might have uh, might be aging, but he was able to sort of turn his season around. He hit over 35 home runs this year. He drove in over 100 runs. I think he hits 278, but he's an on-base machine. Um, three, two year, three years, two years ago, he had an on-base percentage 450, something insane <clears throat> in 2021. So he's a guy that you want to put in the middle of your lineup, and it doesn't matter which lineup it is. This is a quality hitter, and he's only two or three years older. He's only three years older. Can you believe this? He's three years older than Ronnie Mauricio. We'll get into Mauricio why I bring him up. But he is three years older than Ronnie Mauricio. He's basically two or three years older than the average uh, prospect that the Mets have in their, in their farm system. So, so he kind of is in line with a young player that the Mets are... are are uh, keeping an eye on. We know that they're talking about getting younger, going more with younger players, a farm system. They're trying to build from within, and he's kind of in line with that in terms of the age. Now, obviously, he's got a, he's played a lot of games now. He's been in Major League Baseball since 2019. He's considered one of the best hitters in the game. Uh, he's one of the best hitters in the National League. Uh, he is uh, considered to be... Um, on par, if not compared to Ted Williams and his ability to walk and take, you know, work a count and, and hit the ball out of the ballpark and really just be a great hitter. Now, in the previous video about Juan Soto, I, I proposed a trade. A lot of people were sort of, I was very surprised at how people didn't want to do this trade. A lot of people, the, you know, saying that they want to keep certain prospects. Look, I've said this on the prospect type, which you need to subscribe to the tell. By the way, I'll put this the, the script. I'll put the uh, the link into the description of the video. But uh, and when when I do those videos with the prospect type, I don't give any commentary because I'm going to be honest with you. I've not seen certain players. Okay, I've seen Juan Soto. Juan Soto is a great hitter. He's a guy you build your lineup around. And one thing the Mets could use is a number three hitter. They've not had a three hitter really. I think. Uh, since John Olu, that's a long time. I wouldn't consider uh, Beltron a number three hitter. I certainly wouldn't consider David Wright a, a three hitter. David Wright was a number five, a classic number five hitter. In a lot of ways, Beltron was better at number two. But really, they've not had a classic number three hitter since John Olu. That's a long time. And I'm not using that as an example. Why Another reason to go after Soda, I think it's just makes baseball sense to, to make that kind of a deal. Okay. So, uh, this is the trade that I proposed for the Mets to make. 
Uh, first of all, the the Mets have uh, Kevin Pryor, who's a catcher in their farm system. He's their best prospect behind the plate. He is the ninth best prospect, according to MLB Pipeline, behind the plate. But the number one prospect behind the plate is a catcher in the Padres system named Ethan Salas. He's 17, 18 years old. He just recently signed him. He's already considered the best prospect behind the, the plate. And defensively, they're saying that he might be major league ready already. So it's just a matter of him getting his reps in the minor leagues. And he's going to be a, a force in the majors. So when I proposed my trade, I didn't even include Parada. It didn't make sense in my view. Uh, now, I put Ronnie Mauricio in this trade a very specific reason. He's been to the major leagues. Um, we've seen him. The Padres, I'm sure, have scattered him. I'm sure they scattered him during the season. Um, he's had some ups and downs in the sort of short span. He's extremely athletic. He surprises you. I, and I was thinking probably because he's got long legs, he's got long arms. It doesn't seem like he's very athletic. He's extremely athletic. So that's like the positives about him. But... Just as a Mets fan, you move him because really there are other guys that might be better suited for the Mets moving forward, like, say, Jet Williams, uh, and how, uh, Luis Angel Cunha Jr., and, of course, Drew Gilbert. So that's why I, I placed um, Mauricio in that trade. Secondly, the second player in the, that deal that I proposed was Ryan Clifford, who they just brought in from the, the Astros. He's considered an extremely good power hitter. Uh, He's got great plate discipline for his young of an age. But his comparison is Lucas Ju is Lucas Duda. Now, Lucas Duda was an everyday player. So, and also keep in mind with the Padres, they, the, the word is they're trying, they're gonna, they want to shed their, their uh, payroll down to $200 million. So every player seems like it's going to be up for grabs. I will mention this. I would not be surprised if Seth Lugo goes. So I just want to mention him real quickly in this video, but he'll probably get moved. Um, that's an easy one to, to move, an easy contract, whatever. The other two players were minor league pitchers. One was Mike Vassell. Now, the Mets, there's a lot of talk that the Mets are going to go hard after this Japanese pitcher, Yoshinobi Yamamoto. He's 25 years old. That also goes in line with the way the Mets are thinking in terms of getting younger. So he's going to go in and say the Mets sign him. They, they, tra they trade Vassell. They, he's basically replaced with Yamamoto. The other pitcher, and you got to give him something, is Dominic Hamill, who's a year, he's a, he's a little bit behind uh, Vassal. Now, the only thing I did say in, in the previous video on Juan Soto was that the Mets had to hold on to three, five players. Five players are untouchable. Luis Angel Cunha, Jeb Williams, uh, Drew Gilbert, Tyler Stewart, and Blade Tidwell. Everybody else could be moved in this kind of scenario. That's my proposal. That's where I'm, I'm standing right now. With this Mets trade. Okay, now this is some of the rumored teams that the Mets are going to have to compete with in terms of making a trade for Juan Soto. Keep in mind certain things, like I said, the Padres are trying to shed payroll. And even though he is not on the payroll for other than for this year and next year to keep him, he's not going to be on payroll after that. So with that in mind, there are teams that are going to be interested in him. These are some of the teams that I've heard that will be uh, pursuing him in the offseason. Now, two of them I just found out earlier. One was the San Francisco Giants. Makes complete total sense. Because the Giants have been trying to get a superstar for years, years. And they haven't been able to get anybody. So... They have some interesting pieces. Now, I don't think the Padres will trade him within their division. But you never know if they get desperate. If maybe they, maybe the Giants, maybe the Padres say, you know, send us Kyle Harrison, who's one of the best uh, uh, pitching prospects in baseball. And he's the number one uh, pitching prospect for a left-hander in baseball, according to MLB Pipeline. That's a possibility. That's one of the teams I've heard. The other team I've heard, and this, these two teams are from Bob Nightingale. The second team is the Boston Red Sox. Now, since Hein Bloom got himself skadooshed out of Boston, got sent off to the Phantom Zone, you might have a new general manager going in there that's much more aggressive and much more wanting to bring in superstars 
Instead of bringing in washed up superstars like Trevor, Trevor, I don't know him to Trevor Story, folks. Just, just I don't know what happened to him. But just, just that is a team. That's the other team I've heard, and the, and the Red Sox have a good farm system. Obviously, the Mets are going to be talked about a lot. Uh, Jeff Pazan said the Mets are, are, are they're a scary possibility, quote unquote, for Juan Soto. Two other teams I've heard. And there'll be other teams. You'll hear about the Cubs, the Rangers, uh, maybe Houston, you never know. Um, the Mariners. There is not a trade Jerry DePoto will not make. And since they missed out on on getting to postseason, he might be desperate this year going into the offseason to make a big splash for at least for a year or two. But these three teams, these other teams I've heard, one is the New York Yankees, or two teams. One is the New York Yankees. I'll believe that when I see it, because the Yankees have been very passive over the last few years, and the general manager, Brian Cashman, does not seem too enamored wanting to bring in a big left-handed bat, which which is ridiculous considering they play in Yankee Stadium. And the other team is the, the Philadelphia Phillies, who I've heard as well. Uh, that concerns me. Um, people say, well, why don't you just wait a year and let them go to free agency? Yeah, but the thing is, if you let him go, see, if you if a team another team picks him up, then you don't have that opportunity to sign him. Then you got to wait till the end of next year, until he becomes a free agent. And there's never a possibility. There is always a possibility that he might not go to free agency. He might go to some place, say Philadelphia. I mean, the, I mean, it seems like he's more of an East Coast guy than a West Coast guy. So say he goes to Philadelphia and he's hitting like crazy in that that band box, and he decides, you know what, I want to play here. Then you don't have an opportunity to even talk to him. Or maybe he goes to the Yankees. You want to be a Mets fan being pissed off <clears throat> and want Soto hit home runs for the Yankees in front of Horseface? I mean, in front of Aaron Judge? No. No. You don't want that. I don't want that. And do you want him going to the Giants? You never hear from him again. You want him going to the Mariners? Be kicking yourself, complaining that he went to the Mariners of all places and, so- and signed a long term deal? I don't think he'd stay there because I think that, like I said, I think he's more of an East Coast guy. We always talk about players being West Coast guys. I think he's more of an East Coast guy. Just And, and I would mention that he has done rather well at City Field. And he's even uh, put it on his Instagram and on social media that he really likes City Field a lot. <clears throat> so so to me, uh, these are the, to me, that's the most, I mean, these teams are all going to be competing. I would expect that Soto will be moved by the uh, tr- by the uh, winter meetings. I think he'll be moved by that. Um, now you let me know what you think about all the stuff I have in this video. My proposed trade. What you think about all these teams. Did I miss a team? Did I miss a team that I haven't said? The Cubs certainly will be. It'll be interesting to see if they if they go after him. Or they just re-sign Cody Bellinger to a long-term contract. Or they give him a qualifying offer. But this is going to be a lot of fun. If you want to watch uh, videos about Juan Soto, this is the channel you want to watch because you need to subscribe to this. I will do so much stuff on Juan Soto and where he's going to go and hopefully he comes here. I really want him to come to the Mets. I mean, I, you know, I've been wa- waiting for him for a long time. I've been wishing for him for two years, quite frankly. He excites me a lot more than uh, Shoei Otani. <gasps> he does. And if you want Juan Soto here, hit that subscribe button. And I'll keep talking about it. I love talking about it. So let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut. And I'll see you later.